today I am going to prep the garden beds. I want to give them some nutrition. I'm going to sift some compost and I'm going to give them some ashes and some biochar. So I've got a fire going behind me now with some old bamboo and stuff that we cleared out. Palm fronds, sticks, whatever. I'm going to burn that down about halfway so it's part biochar, part ashes. And we're going to stir that into the garden beds that we've been loosening with the broad fork and the hoe. So now it's time to prep these beds and then later we're going to plant them. Maybe in the next video. Now I have to put it out because it's ready. That is beautiful. Probably got about 10, 15 gallons from that burn. Not bad at all. I'm going to try something a little different. To charge the biochar, which I'm going to put in here, I'm going to use some of this seawater and I'm going to put in some compost and I'm going to put in some Epsom salts and then I am going to soak the biochar in it before I put it in the beds. That way we'll see if it, uh, you know, maybe adds a little bit of uh, minerals and useful bits and pieces to it before it goes into the gardens. Because if you put it straight into the gardens, just as charcoal, it will absorb a lot of the nutrition out of the soil at the beginning. Just like if you eat activated charcoal after eating strychnine, it will absorb some of the strychnine out of your stomach. Kids, don't try this at home. There's some Epsom salts and some nice fresh compost. Now we have to go get some of that char. Oh, hi. I didn't see you walk up. Oh, I wasn't resting. I've been working the whole time. <laughs> this goes like this. Have you seen one of these things? This. This is called this. This thing is called a, um, it's called a broad fork. Wait till you see what the end of it looks like. I'll show you. Kind of looks like a horror movie or something. Yeah. So you, you just stick this in the ground. Like that. And uh, you can rock it back and forth. Uh, this is how I do it. David jumps on it and he turns it into a full body workout. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I would end up falling on my face. But uh, I just kind of take it easy and you let your whole, just your weight rest on it. You just go back and forth and it's not hard. And just have some, a little bit of patience and just rock. When you, when you get down, rock it, pull it back a little bit. And uh, there you go. You just loosened up. What is this, like 18 inches? 18 inches worth of soil? Um, 14, I think, on okay, that one. 14. <laughs> 14 inches of soil. Um, and it's, it's not hard. It's really not difficult. Uh, granted, this is a garden bed that's been tilled, worked before. It's not brand new. So it, this is really not particularly hard. But you know what? We've done this in on sod. We've done this in sand. We've done this a lot. And... Um, it, so there are having places where it was more difficult, but it's still doable. And we've we've done lots and lots of space with this uh, broad fork, and it it works very well. So I thought I'd let y'all know about this really great tool. I mean, let me tell you, this thing is so handy. We brought it with us. Can you imagine taking this thing on the airplane? Just imagine that. It was. Um, it was an event. So I've got this soaked up biochar here and Rachel just finished broad forking this bed. So this biochar is going in here and we've also got some finely sifted compost which i'll throw on top too and then this sucker's ready for planting we've got about two more beds to do and then that's all we're going to do
don't really need a lot of compost to make a garden happy. It doesn't take a huge quantity. It takes, I usually I do about a, maybe a quarter inch sprinkling on the top and that's tons, that's plenty. Is that because it's so rich? Is that what you're saying? Or? It's rich and uh, the soil just naturally doesn't hold massive amounts of organic matter except in particular situations. So you don't really need to get a horrifying amount and it is rich because we think of all the matter that went into this before that'll do this looks like the best compost we've ever made is that i mean would you say that do you remember it it's certainly the it's i mean finest good like it's the best compost we ever made because we made it in clay soil hmm. it's got clay in it i see because it was right there in that clay bed okay. the the you cannot make compost that sticks with right. sand. You have to have a little bit of little clay bit of in it to bind the humic acid properly, I learned from Steve Solomon. So right. if, you, if you're making compost in say Florida where you have sandy soil, you should try and find some clay somewhere and mix a little bit into your compost beds because it makes the compost clumps stick together nicely and persist in the soil for a longer period right. rather than just leaching right through. You're, still, you're improving till like, yeah. Right. You just have to get a little clay in it. I think that's why this is the best looking we've ever had. I see. And not, I mean, David is, he's the guy that wrote that compost book, right? Compost everything. So it's not like, woo, we finally hit on it. The best compost we've ever made. Woohoo! We know way, the limitations of Florida. Way after he wrote the book. No, well, you know, he, he's also a big advocate of composting in place. Yeah. So quite a lot of our compost has been just throw it right like around the base that. of a tree or um, throw rotten material right into a garden or bury it's it. It's effective and it's uh, low maintenance. And, and I made very good compost in Tennessee as well. Yeah. We had we had yeah. really rich black compost that right. stuck around with again because clay. we had clay. Yeah. Yeah. That's just been a this while. Is I have a gorgeous. This is going to be a beautiful Do you bed. Want me to get the rake and rake it. I like to get my hands in it. Okay. He also likes to spit coffee cherries, so, yeah. Now we have multiple beds done. Chickens have come in to help yet again. But here, compost. That one's ready. That one's ready. That one I'm leaving alone. That one I may clear the celosia out of, I'm not sure yet. This one was lovingly broad forked by my beautiful wife. And so was this one. So next time, join me and we will get planting again. And I would dig a yam, a yam from the dirt.